I travel. I travel as part of how I make my living. I travel because I love it. I travel because it's my passion. I travel because I'm curious. But what happens when my travels conflict with my identity? What happens when I travel to a place that is dangerous to me because of who I am? I'm currently awaiting for my flight to Saudi Arabia and Saudi Arabia there's a death penalty law against homosexuality. As an openly gay man who's traveled to the Congo, to Uganda, to Russia, places where homosexuality is illegal and is dangerous, I'm faced with the same conflict of should I be going to such places? Should I even be filming and talking about such places? Well, honestly, I think it's a lot to unpack. And I am very well aware of what's going on in the country. But when it comes down to myself, Saudi Arabia has a population of over 2 million people. And as such, there are millions and millions of good people that deserve to be known and to be met. And we can't blame them for the actions of their government. Uh, regardless of whether we like them or not, when I travel, I visit places, meet regular people, and learn about their culture. It helps me make up my mind and let me think for myself about the place itself. For this upcoming series of travels, this is my experience. And thank you for coming along with me. Thank you for coming along with me to my experience to Saudi Arabia. Okay. Here we go. Right, we got our visas and we're checking in. This is the beautiful prime class lounge where it's my favorite part of the ritual of flying. Before we depart, we get to explore different lounges. There's quiet areas where you can just lay down and have a nap as well. Could I be hanging out here a lot? Oh my god, is this a games room? with PlayStation. And of course, no lounge would be complete without a pool table. Casual, you know. Here is the kitchen, the canteen area, where, let's see what they have for dinner tonight. Ooh, fish piccata. Roasted potatoes. Lamb salona. Where do I even begin right now? <laughs> so many good selections. Ooh, some Omani sweets. And then from the all you can eat to the all you can drink. Here's the bar. Really well designed. There's not just one, but two buffet sections in this lounge. Oh my god. How does it feel like to have a whole cinema room all to moi? 
and since we had a long travel exploration day until we got here to Muscat International Airport with the Prime Lounge. Well, Yuruna is off showering, so I get my own showers as well. All inside the lounge too. This is fantastic. Okay, I'm gonna get fresh now. Right, so I'm the only Asian person here, and here is the only white person here, and we're ready for our trip. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is, tourism is a new thing for Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum everyone Just woke up last night we got into the Marriott Courtyard Diplomatic Quarters at Oh What you do it? <laughs> I don't know, it's your MacBook <laughs> <laughs> So we are actually in two beds We got in at around what 3 a.m. Uh yeah Late flight from Moscow yeah. And we have two beds and the thing why we have two beds is that when you're checking in in Saudi Arabia of course everybody at the front desk is Saudi and is Muslim here and so we want to respect the religion and respect the culture here so even as openly gay couple that we are well we're here we're just friends or business partners, colleagues. So we got double beds and I think this will be continuation throughout all of our Saudi trip. Uh, we got away with parts of it in Oman, but Oman is more open than Saudi Arabia is. So I'm not taking that chance at all. But the Marriott Courtyard Diplomatic Quarters is kind of what the name says, Diplomatic Quarters, which is this neighborhood in Riyadh that we are in. And last night when we got in, actually they have this whole security system out front when we were driving our car and they, this guy, this guard, brought out a security metal stick that he would go around and check all underneath our car. We had to open our trunk. And every single car that went through to get to the hotel was like this. So there was a huge lineup of cars just waiting to be security check. And then when we got into the hotel, we had to pop our bags through this huge scanner, just like in the airports and get checked again. So security is really high here. I don't know if it's, because we're in the diplomatic quarters and all the embassies are around or if it's just uh, a regular thing in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh but feeling pretty safe and more important, quite cozy right here. How was your bed last night? It's nice and big. Yeah, I could stretch out. <laughs> was it better for me not to, did I kick you in your sleep? Normally, yes, but now it's impossible. Normally, <laughs> gonna get ready for our first day in Saudi Arabia now. Right here is the Ritz Carlton Riyadh. It's so strange to have this just right across our hotel. Because from 2017 to 2019, this is where, in the Ritz-Carlton, the Saudi Arabia corruption campaign happened. And the princes and the government officials all got rounded up and got detained in the Ritz-Carlton for those years while an anti-corruption campaign got 
you know, they got interrogated, they gave, they got trial there. It's really strange to see that it's right so close to us, just down the road. And then from that campaign, a hundred and seven billion dollars went back to state treasury. And the campaign was, of course, to fight against corruption, but also part of it was about extremism too. And the person who warranted the arrest, he said that it was made to be done so that the country can go back to moderate Islam the way it was before instead of the extremist side. So now we just hopped into our car that we rented from the airport yesterday to explore Riyadh. How do you feel about driving in Riyadh? Because apparently it can be a really chaotic city to drive in. Yeah, yesterday when we uh, went to get some food, yeah. it was uh, quite hectic. We had to pay attention because very unpredictable drivers. And what do you mean by unpredictable? They change lanes very like, randomly on the highway trying to get between people. It's funny because like a three lane highway could become like a six lane highway out of nowhere. Yeah, sometimes the lanes are not visible so that people are just like doing whatever. And you actually use more honking here than other countries in the cars. Yeah, to make them aware of your presence. <laughs> so, hopefully with my handy dandy driver, Yuru. We will be safe, but it's not Yuru is driving that worry about worry about other people's driving. But to explore Riyadh and Saudi Arabia in general, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a car and just driving because the cities here and the whole country, public transportation is not reliable and it's not really a thing. So it's just better to be able to have your own time and control your own time by driving around. So just across the Masamak Fort area, you find Dira Square or Al Sofat Square, but by Westerners, uh, a lot of Westerners and expats call it the Chop Chop Square, uh, which is just kind of a crude name for. This is where public executions take place, and yes, you've heard that right, such as beheading, and you can actually stand on the exact spot where it actually happens and the blood drainers um, yeah you can walk over there I'm kind of nervous and a little frazzled to be honest being here but uh, some time ago executions actually happen pretty much every single day but now they're becoming less and less frequent thank god because while we are here actually when they do happen Foreigners can attend the executions and if the authorities, and there are a lot around, saw you wandering around, they would put you right up in front to shame the person that is getting uh, executed. So you would have to watch it, no excuse. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to take a deep breath and compose myself. This is Iman Turkey bin Abdullah Mosque. One of the largest mosques in Saudi Arabia is located right next to the square that we were just in. And as non-Muslims, as me and Yurun are, I actually thought that was impossible to get in. But, um, here we are. And this place is really magnificent. And, okay, so there's Yurun. It's me here. Aside from a few people cleaning the cleaners, we're the only ones here right now. Oh 
while there's nobody here right now, as you can see, it's weird to think that this would be a place where crowds congregate in huge numbers to watch heads roll. And then this right here is are the blood drainers so I think the name kind of sums it up itself after the execution the beheading all the blood will run through here to drain it either this is the rust or from the rain rusting it or it got tide dyed over time And there's actually three of them just across from each other. This fort now actually forms part of a palace complex. So you can see how the royals lived. Oh. This fort, Fort Masmak, was built in 1865 and this is where exactly where the Battle of Riyadh took place. It was a battle that helped Ibn Saud recapture Riyadh, thus creating the third Saudi state which became present day Saudi Arabia. And now it's really cool to walk through this fort, admission is free, and you get to see the unification of the kingdom and how the kingdom became what it is today get to go through all these different rooms of the fort as well and everything is really well put out in English and Arabic this was a well back in the day from the fort and then here are stone basins to use to hold the water for in the houses and in the mosque as well. We're entering Souk al Zel for all of our Arabian carpets needs and every little trinket and spices here for ours to discover. I love this contrast between old and the new. Look at this, in a two lane street, this van literally squeezed in between. Look at this, we're in one lane here and there's two lanes as normal streets are. And he literally just squeezed in between. How tight that is, oh my god. That's what I need. Could you use a space?
Okay, now let's grab some grub because we're at Natch Village restaurant. And Natch Village is a traditional Saudi restaurant that serves traditional food here. And the building itself displays many interesting details and traditional Saudi decor. As you can see, architecture, art, and lifestyle. What is this? Oh, yes, please. So this is Arabic coffee. Okay. Oh! Wow! Thank you so much. So we're starting off lunch with some Arabic coffee. Oh, and dates! Oh, this is so much pleasure all at once. Okay, let me let me sip the coffee. And we have some dates. That one right there. Tastes a little hints of saffron in it, right? Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and cardamom as well. The entire restaurant feels like I'm walking through a cultural museum with all of this traditional doors, this archway, old photographs. It really feels like a step back into time. Sitting the traditional way. Down on the floor, cross-legged, and then this is where we'll have lunch. As you can see this jeresh, which is the rice in it, and there's little pieces of lamb. Little tomato. Ah, Chunk of camel. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna bite into it. Mm. Actually, so tender. And the way it's cooked, the meat just kind of like slips and falls apart from each other, which is really nice. And to have a little bit of rice with it is, is a good touch. We are at the King Abdulaziz Historical Center, which is also the National Museum. And to begin our National Museum, we are greeted at the entrance with the meteorite found in the empty quarters. Okay, now it's going to start. It's going to take us through. This part is called Man in the Universe and starts through how this land was before it became Saudi Arabia. The Arabian Peninsula was much wetter then, so it hosts a different variety of climates and animals, including the Macedon, which roamed this peninsula in Arabia about 17 million years ago. Casual. So here's a cool bone of it. Rawr. It's a museum that covers a vast area of years found in Saudi Arabia with artifacts from prehistoric elephants to the other Ottomans occupation to the first oil wells excavations. Here you can read ancient Egyptians and ancient Greek and some of the artifacts.
Let's grounds. This was our first foray into Saudi Arabia and in the next upcoming videos, we have more to discover. So hit subscribe if you haven't already, leave us a comment about what you think and give this video a big ol' thumbs up.